Welcome to another video of Do You Know What To Do. Today, we're gonna to show you how to turn this into this. Beautiful, right? It is. So if you wanna make quality throw pillows, you can do this even without a sewing machine. So keep, so keep, on, keep on watching. watching. Here we are again. We're just testing. Hello. We're gonna show you number three. Why are you trying to save a dead joke? <laughs> okay, so to get started, we're gonna show you the tools you're gonna need and the supplies you need to get first. First, you're gonna need a tape measure. All right. And a marker. A pair of scissors, a straight edge, or a ruler. Either one's gonna work just fine. Very simple. Now, the supplies that you're gonna need, this is some muslin. You, right. you can use any other fabric that's light and easy to mark on. Yeah, so don't, you don't have to buy something you don't need. So if you have a light color fabric, use it. Fine. We've got this batting, poly batting, that you can, uh, you're, you're gonna need for this particular uh, style of throw pillow we're making. And obviously you need the fill. Right. So the fiber fill, okay? So find yourself a bag of this as well, all right? Now we told you, you don't need a sewing machine to make these. And how you do it is you just need an iron. Right. And this is iron on adhesive tape. And you can get it half inch, quarter inch. It does a great stick with job. Half inch. Right. Look at the bond here. You know, I mean, you're gonna. What are you doing with your throw pillow? You don't need more than this. So you don't even need a sewing machine. And the purpose of this is you can make as many high quality throw pillows as you want because you can buy them inexpensively. Yeah. But you get what you pay for. They usually mat real uh, fast. They ball up in the inside. They have and, clumps. It feels like a yeah. polyfill in and there. We got a trick to keep those clumps down. So. Just uh, let's let's go forward and start making the throw pillow. Let's get started. So now we're gonna show you how to cut down your fabric. Right, it's very simple. The size that you're going to cut down your fabric is directly linked to the finished size of throw pillow that you want. Now ours is a 16 by 16. Right. So you want the fabric here, your liner fabric, to be two inches larger than your finished fabric of the throw pillow. Now finish means everything's sewn and inverted. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna need ours at 18 by 18. So I would make my marks 19 by 19 because as you just said, when it's all sewn or you use that adhesive tape, coming in a half inch on each side, it it'll be, be 18 by 18. Right, it'll be finished. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna start making our marks here. All right, so let's get started. Mm -hmm. Now, I did notice that the T-square is, or this is called a T-square. It so is, a it's dry not a regular ruler. Now, and you don't need that. It's inexpensive. They're not that expensive at these, uh, you know, box stores. But uh, you don't need it. it. You can just use a simple ruler. And what you can do is, um, especially if your ruler has uh, marks on both sides, let's just take, for example, the 10 and the 38. Both of them have a line. Mm. You would make a line, or you can use a salvage. This is a clean, nice Straight, uh, straight salvage right yeah. here. So we would just take um, take the the marks there, uh, the the line here and the line there. Line them up as best you can, like that. Right, and then you would just make your mark here, and now you got hopefully you know a perpendicular um, to line your salvage. To, right to the salvage. So you know it's just an insert. You're going to be fine. You're not lining any patterns up. So don't go buy the T-square if you don't want to. If you want to, then great. You can use it for other things. Drywall. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, cut it 19 by 19, and then uh, uh, we're going to show you a little trick when we get down here, too, so it makes it easier for uh, closing it up. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right, there we go, 19 by 19. Okay, so we're good to go. Now, a little trick that you can do is leave a tab for yourself on this end. So when you get to the sewing table, or if you're using the iron and the adhesive tape, it's easier with everything stuffed in there to close up the uh, insert. Yeah, because you won't have much excess left. No, it's a little bit of a pain, shoving it underneath the sewing machine there. So all to do, all you do to get this mark is find your halfway mark. Right here. Right, Make ours a mark. is nine and a half, okay? Then we gave ourselves six inches from that mark here, six inches from that mark, right. okay? So the tape measure, the metal, the width is a half inch. And I just, you know, did a rough guideline like that, a little rough line right next to it. And then end them off with some small marks there. And just cut that out? Just cut that out, yeah. Cut that line out, cut everything else out. And then we're going to take it to the sewing uh, table and go. We're just going to sew from here all the way over to here, and we're going to stop there and leave that tab open. All right. Okay. So I'm going to get to cutting this out, and then we'll get to the sewing table. All 
Okay, so this is all sewn. We're gonna simply invert this. Now as he does that, I'm gonna show you the poly batting. This is quarter inch. You can get half inch or one inch. And the thicker the better because of the poly fill. Uh, yeah, definitely, because some of the poly fill is very lumpy and it's not soft. Uh, it just depends on the quality that you get. So the, you know, the thicker is gonna hide any poor quality fill that you might have gotten your hands on too. But this is pretty good here, this is soft. Definitely, definitely. Right. Now that you got that inverted, we're it, just gonna- You know, another thing too, the thicker the polyfill, I mean the batting, the less polyfill you're gonna need. True. You don't wanna overstuff these things, especially if you really use them to take a nap. They can become like a brick. <laughs> just like the back cushions can. They, they, you, we can overdo them pretty fast. Right. Okay. So all you're gonna need is your poly batting. Right, we got underneath. two layers here, okay. And we're going to take our scissors and, and cut it right out. Cut right, right along the line there, right, right next to it. Now I usually have green scissors that I use for uh, cutting batting, but uh, somebody walked off with my scissors. We won't say who she is, but nonetheless, <laughs> they're gone. So let's cut this out and get going. All right, we'll get back to you. Okay, so we have the batting all cut out to the exact size of the uh, insert. Right. Okay, and we got to get it in there. So the best thing to do is keep them together. Okay. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. Get it inside the cover there. All right. If you do that, I'm going to collect the polyfill right here. Okay. All right. It's best to do them together because if you do one at a time, then um, you might end up messing. One up while you're the putting one in the up, other right, one. That you already did. And just get the lay down. Get it up in the corners there as far as you can. Yeah, and just try to make sure it lays flat because you don't want this to be lumping. Right, and if you find that it is lumping, then take it out and cut it down a little bit. It's a little too big. Because that's the purpose of this um, this batting is to keep down the lumps from inferior uh, fill. But this is this is good stuff we got going here. But if you get yourself across or get your hands on some inferior uh, Phil, it's it's a mess. So th this will eliminate. I was so excited when I ran across this. I was working them. I got sick and tired of shoving them in there, trying to make them all smooth and standing on top of them. And then I realized, you know, why don't I just have some Dacron and put that and make like a, a cover of its own and put it in there. And ever since then, I've never gone back. It's worked so, ever since. Right. So this is a good trick. You're going to like it. Right. Okay. So now we're just going to fill the uh, cover with the, the uh, polyfill. Yep. Just take it and sandwich it in between. Right, go up as far as you can up into the corners. Get as much as you can, but don't make it into a brick. Yeah, yeah because especially if you're going to be using these as, you know, for napping or something, because they can get uh, very difficult, very hard. And um, it's difficult or you know, a pain to open them back up and pull it all out. So it's best to get it right, you know, the first time when you're doing it. Not too much. It's like back cushions. Right. You don't want to overfill it. All right, and after we fill this up, we're going to just sew up the tab and put it in the cover. All right, so we're gonna put some more in there and we're good to go. Let's keep going. Okay. So now you see it all sewn up and ready to go. So now you know how to make as many high quality polyfilled inserts as you like. Yeah, and they'll last a really long time. They will. This fabric right here is very thin, the insert that's inside here. So that poly batting trick, man, shut up, bird. <laughs> <laughs> So that trick with the poly batting really keeps down the lumps. So a thin fabric, you're gonna need that. Definitely. So if you want to learn how to make an insert, now you know what to do. If you haven't already subscribed, we hope you do. And please give us a thumbs up. Share with a friend. Yes. So, hey, by the way, we'll make another video that shows you how to make the covers themselves. But first we're gonna get lunch, right? Absolutely. I'm starving. starving.